Hello everyone, it is a concern, Dr. Miskoff, and it is April 18th, 2020, about 8 p.m., and vlogging from my kitchen uh, here in Toms River uh, on uh, COVID-19, and I wanted to continue the discussion on remdesivir, uh, again, a, a medication, a, a potential uh, FDA-approved therapy for uh, COVID-19, and I think, you know, honestly, uh, with the studies that they have going on and looking at all the other, you know, therapies, um, and, and some of our experiences already with real patients um, that remdesivir, you know, probably has the best shot. You know, if you ask me today of getting FDA approval soonest uh, for um, for COVID-19, and hopefully uh, that's, you know, by June or so, uh, or even sooner. Um, you know, one theory is that, you know, the, the data will be so good uh, that they'll stop the trial early or the trials early, I should say, and there's six ongoing internationally. Uh, two I'm going to, uh, you know, uh, talk more about uh, in the United States. Uh, again, uh, on the vlog last night, we talked about how uh, there was a leakage. Stat News um, had gotten hold of a video. Uh, the University of Chicago had discussed um, at least preliminary data on 113 or so severe patients and suggested that, you know, at least in that unauthorized leak, um, that uh, out of the 113, that only two had perished and that most had gone home. Uh, already and in and, and, uh, you know, a week's time or less, uh, and that was suggested by that leak. Um, so uh, that would be the severe uh, uh, study right now, and there are two phase three trials. Gilead is sponsoring uh, in the United States, and there's extended sites outside the United States as well. Uh, the FDA did a rapid review of this, accepted the investigational new drug, IND, uh, uh, for remdesivir, and their randomized open-label multi-center trials. There's a severe uh, study where there is no placebo. Um, they're randomized to receive remdesivir uh, for five days or 10 days. Uh, that's the larger study, um, uh, 6,000 patients. They do not have to be on a mechanical ventilator to be in that trial. Unlike the expanded access program, uh, which has a different list of hospitals that are enrolling um, in, in that, uh, and, and uh, those patients have to be on ventilators. They have to have a positive test or at least a pending test with a known contact uh, for COVID. And I know there are some local hospitals by us that are in the expanded access program, but we're talking about the two phase three trials now. And uh, again, specifically the severe uh, trial right now, which is again, randomized to five or 10 days of remdesivir plus standard of care, whatever that is. Um, they cannot get antivirals or other, they can't be enrolled in another trial uh, for COVID-19. And if they receive something that's thought to have direct antiviral, properties um, uh, that it has to be at least 24 hours past before they, they can actually be enrolled in the trial. Uh, it's easier, I think, to enroll the severe patients. Um, a lot of the moderate patients are you know, more mild, if you will, may not even be coming into the emergency room, but there is a trial with 1,600 expected, um, so significantly less than the severe, which is N equals 6,000, on the moderate, uh, 1,600. The thing about the moderate is that there is also a control arm with placebo, uh, or rather uh, standard of care, I should say. So they're going to be randomized to either receive remdesivir for five days, 10 days, or uh, versus standard of care. So in the severe trial, uh, there is no placebo or no, uh, they, they, they are receiving remdesivir, it's just a matter of how many days. Uh, and in the moderate trial, again, the differentiation factor here is the pulse oximetry. Um, if these patients have a pulse ox of over 94%, they fall into the moderate. If they have uh, a pulse oximetry under that, uh, or they're requiring supplemental oxygen, uh, then they're considered severe. They do not need to be on mechanical ventilation. And in fact, if they are on mechanical ventilation at the day of screening, uh, that is an exclusion criteria for the severe. Um, there are two ongoing trials in China. I did hear uh, some issues with recruitment there, as they at least claim the case level is so low. Um, this was a joint effort between uh, China-Japan Friendship Hospital. Um, uh, there are multiple sites in the Hubei, uh, Hubei province. Uh, Gilead, it, it's not like the, uh, the, the, these large trials in the U.S. Uh, these are sponsored in China uh, by, by this hospital, I suspect, uh, and these other sites. But Gilead is providing the uh, remdesivir free of charge, and they are uh, providing study guidance. These patients are milder, they, uh, what they're calling mild to moderate, a much smaller number, 308 recruitment, uh, and there is no oxygen requirement. They have to be admitted. Uh, so again, this is a mild to moderate. And you know, it, it probably is a good idea 
to get patients on remdesivir if it really is interfering with the RNA. Um, you know, uh, this is a, a nucleotide analog, adenosine specifically, and it's inserting itself into the, MR, uh, the mRNA or the RNA chain, I should say, uh, and that's causing a premature termination. So that's the fact uh, on um, remdesivir. So getting the uh, product earlier, um, as soon as you have a diagnosis, we have the rapid test now uh, is key, I think, and, and, and we'll find that, you know, the sooner they get it, the better. Why not shut down the virus's replication immediately rather than having to scramble to give the anti-IL-6, uh, the cerilimabs, the tozolizumabs, uh, or, uh, you know, uh, convalescent plasma, which we don't know how well that's going to work at this point. But at least in the China uh, two trials, uh, one of those is um, uh, for severe, uh, so they need oxygen requirement, uh, and the other one would be uh, for those uh, who are not requiring oxygen or a mild or moderate um, uh, study recruitment. Going back to the uh, larger uh, expanded site uh, trials for Gilead, uh, again, for the severe and moderate in the U.S., um, uh, for the severe, the inclusion criteria is that their pulse oximetry uh, has to be less than 94% at screening. They cannot be on a ventilator at screening. This is actually for 12 years of age and up, so it does involve pediatric. They have to have a positive test within the last four days. Um, so if the test was five days, six days, seven out, you know, or more, that would be excluded. Um, again, there's no placebo in this, R, in, in this trial. Um, uh, other exclusion criteria would be uh, if they received an antiviral uh, within the last 24 hours from the study dose given, if they're in multi-organ system failure, uh, and if they're on the respirator, mechanical ventilator for five or more days, uh, they are excluded. For the moderate trial, again, pulse oximetry over 94% on room air at screening. They need to have an abnormal chest x-ray or infiltrates. Sometimes we're finding that they don't develop the uh, pneumonia immediately on admission or it's very mild. And then uh, they progress, you know, three, four, five, six days into the admission. And then the fever comes and, and then we see, um, uh, uh, you know, them decline and having to go on higher flow of oxygen. I wonder, uh, you know, the recruitment numbers are much less, 1,600 for the moderate trial, uh, 6,000 for the severe. If it's almost worth waiting on those patients because in the moderate, remember, they can get placebo. Uh, I don't know what the uh, distribution is on that, uh, how many are going to get placebo. But, you know, if you're going into a trial as a patient, you kind of want to be sure that you're getting the drug. I think if you have a choice and if you're classified as severe, requiring oxygen supplementation or that pulse ox of less than 94% on room air, um, then, um, uh, you know, you're, you're sort of guaranteed if you get into the trial, you're going to get the product uh, or the medication. Uh, so maybe it's worth waiting if you uh, just have minimal infiltrates uh, and your pulse oximetry is still pretty good uh, until you're technically, you, you know, a couple days into the stay. Uh, you don't want to go too many days in, but waiting until your pulse ox actually drops and going into the severe arm. Um, for the uh, moderate trial, again, there was a placebo arm, pulse ox over 94%, room air at screen, abnormal x-ray with infiltrates, they have to be hospitalized, and same criteria with the positive polymerase chain reaction test or swab um, within four days of admission. They cannot be on a ventilator at screening. Uh, obviously, one of the outcomes will be looking at the odds ratio of what happens to these people. Uh, did they pass or die? Um, did they end up on a ventilator after they were uh, randomized to either remdesivir 5, 10 days or a placebo if they're in the, the moderate uh, potential trial? Um, uh, did they uh, do very well and get discharged uh, quickly? How many days uh, did it take for them to get discharged? Um, so what actually happened to them? Uh, did they end up on ECMO, et cetera? These are the types of outcomes they're going to be looking at. Now, as far as, you know, what happens if you develop a fever as an outpatient, uh, we've talked about resisting, um, you know, taking medications such as hydro hydroxychloroquine, Plaquenil, azithromycin, uh, you know, just requesting that from the, from the outpatient docs or uh, providers, extenders, um, but rather getting tested. Uh, and if you're feeling ill to get to, you know, either an urgent care or a hospital ER, so you can get the x-ray. If you have the infiltrates, what's the pulse ox? Um, and then if you get admitted, obviously, are you a candidate for um, one of these products, uh, remdesivir at 5 or 10 milligrams. Uh, again, if you're classified as moderate, you may get placebo. And if you're severe, uh, you don't have to necessarily be on a, a respirator. 
Um, in fact, a lot of those patients don't start off on respirators and, and, and get the remdesivir either five or 10 days. But where would you go? Uh, so right now the sites uh, in New Jersey are Robert Wood Johnson at New Brunswick, Hillsboro, um, uh, and Newark, uh, Hackensack Meridian uh, at Hackensack um, also, and St. Joseph's and Patterson. So those are sites uh, listed for both the moderate and severe trials for remdesivir through Gilead in New York. You got Columbia, Cornell, multiple Mount Sinai sites, um, Danbury Hospital, North Shore, Jacoby, uh, the v, one of the VAs, uh, Jamaica Hospital. Um, so those were the ones that were listed in New York and in Pennsylvania, you got UPenn or uh, Hospital uh, University of Pennsylvania and Temple. Now, again, to, to cl uh, clarify, there are expanded access programs. Uh, we have local hospitals in New Jersey. I'm not going to go through them right now, but th these patients would already be on a ventilator, uh, already have a positive test or one pending with a known contact to COVID. Um, so if you're getting expanded access, these are different hospital sites and you're already on a respirator and severe. Um, and again, that's not going to be for placebo. That's an outreach to Gilead. Um, and there are uh, hospitals that are being added even locally as we speak. Again, two trials out of China, severe and uh, mild to moderate. They're either requiring oxygen or they're not. And then there's a, uh, another trial. I said there were six, so two that we discussed, moderate, severe, and then China, two mild, moderate uh, in one trial and severe in another. And then also the um, U.S. National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease, the NIAID, or a, a sub-branch of the NIH, the National Institute of Health, has a randomized phase two trial, double-blind, double blind, placebo-controlled. Um, these are patients hospitalized with COVID-19 diagnosis. Um, and uh, Gilead is providing the drug free of charge and input and guidance. That started February 21st. The issue with this trial is it's supposed to go out to April of 2023. Again, you may get the placebo. Um, and so I have a feeling that we're going to get a rapid approval for this if the data is as good as suggested from the leak out of the University of Chicago uh, from Stat News that we talked about in last night's vlogs. Um, uh, so I, by April 2023, I would hope that we already have, you know, an FDA approved therapy. I would hope by June or July we have one fast track, maybe remdesivir. So I don't know if this trial will actually last. Uh, and then out of France is the INSERM, I-N-S-E-R-M, one study uh, with a World Health Organization or WHO protocol. Gilead, again, is providing drug free of charge um, and input. So six active trials, all on clinicaltrials.gov, uh, the ones of most interest to us here in the U.S., uh, where you can actually get to these hospitals and uh, even if you have moderate disease, at least have a shot at um, getting the product versus placebo. And if you're classified as severe with infiltrates or pulse oximetry over 94% um, uh, PCR that's positive, and again, with the rapid test, it's very possible that's back uh, right away, but it didn't go over four days. Um, and, you know, obviously I can't have kidney function that's under a creatinine clearance of 50, less than 50. Um, and liver function testing, that was over five times the upper limit of normal. These are some other exclusion criteria. So in conclusion, there is a lot going on. Remdesivir seems to be the, uh, the best shot at approval first. Um, Gilead giving out the, uh, the therapy throughout the world in these other trials that are not primarily sponsored by the company. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll have this therapy and hopefully the leak from University of Chicago is true and only two people, uh, you know, less than, you know, just a couple percent uh, perished in the severe arms that received it and, it. and hopefully they did get out of the hospital in less than a week. Have a great night and uh, everybody stay well. Thank you.